association plan for your business. Has anyone shared the concept of sustainability with you? What about the need to protect the rights of minority shareholders? What are those ingredients germane to having effective meetings? For these and many more, tune in to a corporate governance platform every Thursday on MITV, your darling station, on DSTV 255 and UHF 43 at 4 30 p.m. Corporate governance platform is your best medium for informative and educative strategies for the practice of the corporate governance profession. Institute, Institute of, of Chartered Secretaries, Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Nigeria. ICSAN, the, the hub of, of governance, governance professionals. professionals. Hello and thanks for joining another interesting episode of your favorite program on TV, Corporate Governance Platform. The program is proudly brought to you by the Institute of Charter Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan, the hub of governance professionals. And we are reaching you live from MITV Lagos. I am Dr. Tunde Odeyemi, and we have another interesting episode for you this evening. We'll be having a conversation on the roles of non-executive directors in corporate governance. Non-executive directors' role is very critical to corporate governance and, of course, to the success of any organization. So we are going to be discussing in the next couple of minutes the roles of non-executive directors in corporate governance. And to lead in the conversation is a very distinguished lawyer, a member of Ixan, and of course, expert in corporate governance, Chief Adewale Adeniji, ACIS. Chief Adewale Adeniji holds a law degree from Ogun State University, Agoiwoye, and was called to the Nigerian Bar in November 1988. He caught his legal teeth in the, in the prestigious law firm of J G O K Ajayi, SAN and Co., where he learned the roles as a litigator and the corporate law firm of Fayemi, Folani, Shonoike and Company, where he learned his craft as a corporate attorney. In January 1992, he started his own law firm, Adewale Adeniji Legal Practitioner, then known as Messrs Adeniji and Oyetola, Barristers, Solicitors and Arbitrators. Since then, the law firm has been privileged to providing cutting-edge legal and corporate services to quite a number of multinationals, blue chips, and SMEs in economies across Africa and Asian continents. Chief Adewale Adeniji also runs Scriba Nominees Limited, which continues to provide corporate governance guidance to many public and private companies. He's also a chartered arbitrator and a member of the Lagos Court of Arbitration, Lekki Lagos. He has been involved in several arbitration hearings as a neutral in Nigeria and the United Arab Emirates. Apart from serving many corporates as company secretary, Chief Adeniji also enjoys the privilege of sitting on the boards of some companies within and outside Nigeria as a non-executive director. He is currently serving in Nixon Lagos State Branch as the vice chairman of the Education Committee and is happily married with children, one of whom is a legal practitioner and a student member of Ixan. Chief Adeniji, it's nice to have you on Corporate Governance Platform. Thank you so much, Doctor. So, very robust uh, 
profile here, yeah. but the one that is most interesting to me is the fact that your son is also a lawyer and is a member of uh, is a student member of Ixan. Actually, a daughter. My this is daughter. is a doctor. Yeah. Okay, okay. She's a legal practitioner and a student member of Ixan. Ixan, that's that's interesting. From from father to daughter, <laughs> that, we are going to be discussing something which I think is very critical to corporate governance, right. and that is the role of non-executive directors. Mm. And for our viewers, you can be part of the show by asking questions or making comments on the show. And you can only do this via text message. Please send your comments or your questions to 080-2323-1287. i take the number again, 2323-1287. Please, no phone calls, only via text message. Questions? will be answered by Chief Adeniji. So Chief, let's start our conversation by asking who indeed or really are the non-executive directors and what are their roles in organization? Thank you for the question. I'd like to take it in three tiers. The first step is to say that a director is somebody who runs a company on behalf of the stakeholders, the shareholders and the owners of the company. The board of directors has normally three sets of directors. The executive management, those who are running the business, the chief executive and executive directors. Then we have the non-executive directors okay. who are people that are, we are discussing today. Okay. They are directors who do not run the organization on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. They have specific roles expected of them, which I'm sure we'll be discussing as we go along today. So the non-executive director is that director of a company who does not have a day-to-day -day running of the company. They don't go to the company on a daily basis. They do not have executive functions. Okay. They only attend board meetings or board committee meetings. They do not report every day to work as a director in that company. Okay, then what benefits do the non-executive directors bring to the organization? Thank you so much. Now, the Nigerian um, Code of Corporate Governance, Principle 6, s expects that non-executive directors will be people who bring their knowledge, their expertise to the company for a specific purpose. Okay. And that is the purpose of ensuring that the strategy of the company is top shape and the company works to optimal performance. So to answer your question, when you have a non-executive director on the board of a company, such people will bring diverse knowledge and expertise. For example, mm. let me try and paint a picture. You have a tech company who is, that is run by somebody who is smart in technology, who is providing maybe financial services. Now, on the board of that tech company, it will be ideal when you have people, for example, who have business expertise. Okay. So they will bring their knowledge into the company at the board level in such a way that whatever products that tech company can come up with, they will ensure how it gets to the marketplace and how it retains relevance in the marketplace. You can also have somebody who is an expert in financial matters which the tech directors might not have mm. and that person brings their wealth of experience into the budgeting process into the risk management process into every other thing that makes an organization profitable and sustainable over a long period of time so basically if i have a company or i run a company and i want non-executive directors all i should be looking for is the experience the knowledge and the expertise. Yes. These are the things they bring that into is the, the organization. Best practice recommended by the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance. Okay. Then we have the independent directors. Yes. Now, what distinguished the non executive directors from the independent directors? Right. I had said at the beginning that a board of directors has three types of directors. Okay. The ones in executive management. Yeah, you mentioned that. The non executive directors that I just explained and the independent non-executive directors. Again, this unique role of an independent non-executive director that we call INETS came into being because of the long-term growth of the company and sustainability and its impact to stakeholders. Now, principle seven of the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance 
says that an independent non-executive director is to bring one thing to the board of any organization, and that is impartial objectivity. They, they have to be an expert in bringing objectivity to the running of the company, and I'll explain why and so I distinguish. For example, there are people who are knowledgeable, who are experts in their field, but who have an overview of the company rather than from the perspective of the owners. So the code expects that an INET should be somebody who is independent of the management of the company. And how does the code ensure that? The code says that, number one, ideally, an INET, independent non-executive director, should not have proprietary interest in the company. Or that if they do have, it should not be more than 0.01% of the capitalization of that company. Let me paint the picture. For example, you have a company that has a full paid up capital of 10 million naira. Okay. To serve as an INET in that organization, then you should not have more than 1,000 shares out of the 10 million. The purpose of this is to ensure that your objective, you are not just after profit, and you'll be able to distinguish from what the owners want and what you think is best for the company. The second distinguishing factor from a net, that is a non-executive director, an INET from a net, is that if you are to serve on the board of any company, the recommended practices of the code it says you must not have been in contract with the company on whose board you want to serve within five years of your taking up the appointment. Meaning that if you had been a service provider to that company, maybe like a company secretary or a legal advisor or as a consultant, now you cannot be appointed as an INET of that company until after five years after you have stopped working with that company. Another okay. part of it is that you cannot have been working at a directorate level or above of any regulator of that company. Wonderful. For example, if you are to be appointed as an INED of a commercial bank, or let's say a microfinance bank, then you must not have worked at the directorate level or above of the regulators such as the Central Bank of Nigeria or the Securities and Exchange Commission within three years of the time that you take up an appointment as an INED. All this to ensure that you have a high level of objectivity. Now, what I have explained for INET distinguishes it from NETs, non-executive directors. Okay, we, we I want to come in, yes. especially for the benefit of our viewers. Yes, sir. We have seen the concept of independence yes. is to create objectivity. Yes. And there are things that revolves around this objectivity. You shouldn't have worked with the company. Yes. Maybe three years. Depending if you have worked with the a regulator so, uh, or five years you have, if you've provided service you have for the provided company. service for the for the organization now are these not important in also appointing non-executive directors yes. why only independent executive directors that yeah. you call and um, independent non-executive directors that you call INED? yeah now it is not unlikely and usually the case that the owners of the company who appoint the board to manage the company on their behalf, okay. apart from having the executive management, will also have one or two other who are not in executive management, but who represent their interest. So at all times and purposes, those people, that is the net, it's not unlikely, even though they don't go there on a day-to-day -day basis, okay. it's not unlikely that they answer to the controlling figure of that company. Mm. That is what distinguishes a, a non-executive director from an independent non-executive director. And all this is born out of what had happened historically with the failures of companies where it was discovered that insider trading had led to the collapse of many companies. So the idea came up that why don't we have another core of directors who will not be beholden to the owners of the company but will come and ensure that there is a form of check and balance between those who own the company and other stakeholders because a company works in a society sorry sure. a company works in a society apart from the owners of the company there are also also people in society whose who the company's activities will impact 
Okay. So the, the policy view is that, yes, people set up business to make profit, but they also work, for example, in an environment. There must be people who are independent-minded, who are objective at a level where their only focus would not be profit, would not be what goes to the advantage of the company, but what um, impacts the company positively and the society in which it operates. Okay, I, I, I will come back to the issue of what should now be the composition of non-executive directors, independent directors, and of course, the executive directors. Yes, yes. But let me quickly talk to our viewers. If you are just joining us, it's corporate governance platform, and we are having conversation on the roles of non-executive directors. You can ask questions in this program on this program and you can also make comments. Your question or comments should be via text message to 080-2323-1287. The number again 080-2323-1287. You have the number on the screen of your TV set. Now we understand the importance of having non-executive directors and independent non-executive directors. Is it a regulatory matter or just what is code of the, the, in the code of corporate governance specify that a board, this is the way a board should be, com, should be composed? Okay. If I have a board and I have executive directors, non-executive directors, and I don't have independent non-executive director, can I still fly? Oh, yes. In fact, a company can still operate even just with executive directors. Okay. without non-executive directors, without independent non-executive directors. But corporate governance is about best practices. Okay. It's about what is not only good for the company, but also good for the society. Okay. For example, the companies that had failed as a result of in insider dealings and manipulations had led to loss of jobs had led to people, families being displaced because their breadwinners were out of a job. So corporate, best, uh, corporate governance best practice is such that let us recommend the structure of a board in such a way that it is balanced. Gender parity, knowledge balance. You have people who have more understanding of issues not unique to the company who will come on board and engender discussions that will help the company. Don't forget, the policy behind good corporate governance is that a company must not only thrive, but a company will be there for a long period of time. Okay. From one generation uh, okay. to the other. Sustainability. Sustainability. Okay. Now, th th there is another level to it, which you have not mentioned. Some companies also do have senior, yes. independent, non-executive directors. directors yes. What are their roles? Good. Now, the senior independent non-executive director is not too common in Nigeria. Okay. But the origin of it is from the UK. There was this Higgins report in 2003 which looked into the failure of some companies and part of the report recommended that amongst independent non-executive directors can we designate one or two as senior and for the singular purpose of interfacing between the owners of the business and the company on matters that had been routed through the chairman or the chief executive and had not been resolved. Okay. They will act as the, some people call them the brain of the board, some people call them the resource person of the board. They are usually people who have not only served on that board but on several boards with distinction. Okay. People who have the, who have been in management who had been in non-executive uh, directorship positions, people who are influential and can also mentor those who are inside the company. So it's something that I will want the Nigerian companies to embrace. But the problem I foresee, maybe not a part of a matter for this discussion, is the implementation. Okay. In climes where this had been implemented, the downside of it had been that you will have people who grow so powerful as senior independent non-executive directors, directors so much so that they will apparently be acting as if they were chairman of the board and they are not the chairman and of the they are board. not the chairman of the I board i can understand <laughs> that problem okay I, I have a question from somebody he didn't put his name he said what are the likely negative effects if a company does not have non-executive direct non 
executive directors. Okay. No, no. If the company doesn't have non-executive directors, the downside of it, the first primary downside of it, will be that the company would be operating from a restrictive point of view. Do not forget that I said at the beginning that a board of directors is set up by the owners and stakeholders of a company to manage the company on their behalf. Amongst those who the owners of the company will have appointed will be the chief executive and one or two executive directors. So normally, he will place the piper, dictate the tune. Sure. It is what those owners of the company want that the board will always do. What the board does and recommend is what the company does, and that will impact society. So for me, the negative aspect of not having non-executive directors on a board is that the board will have a narrow view. The mm. only view that the board will have, the only thing they will discuss, will be what will advance the interest of the owners. Oh, nice. For example, let's pick the picture. You are running an oil company. You are operating from the Niger Delta and your board is composed of only representatives of appointees of the owners, people who are beholden to the owners, whose livelihood depends on the prosperity of the company without regard for the environment. Mm. That will be a narrow view operating the company. But contrary-wise, in such a company, if you have, for example, people from, the rural com from that community where the company operates, as independent non-executive directors, then they will ensure that one, you do not degrade the environment, two, you factor in stakeholders in the community into whatever decisions you discuss and decide on behalf of the company. So the effect of not having non-executive directors is that the company will operate from a restrictive point of view. Narrow-minded uh, so. point of view. Okay, why is it that directors and of course, non-executive directors with the expertise, the experience, the knowledge they are bringing. Why is it that it is necessary for them to also continue to update their skill? Good. Now, um, if you understand this story I'm about to um, share, then my Make answer the story is very brief. Yes, my answer <laughs> is embedded. You cannot be a warrior, champion warrior, and you go to sleep and you hear a lot of noise and hoplam and you say i want to go out as before without sharpening your skills mm. no matter the level of expertise running a company a business environment an economy of any country is dynamic what applies yesterday might not apply today and definitely for tomorrow things will change so the importance of constant renewal of the mind for directors by going for conferences by attending seminars and taking courses is that they become abreast of what is current and what is going on. So it is a synchronon. If you find a company that is doing well, where the board is thriving and balanced, you will find a board that goes for board retreats, a board that goes for training, selected training, and this will have been budgeted for at the beginning of the year. So the director goes to this training, another goes to that training, and then they come back the wealth of experience and knowledge will only benefit the business. The warrior needs to sharpen his sword. At all times. <laughs> At all times. I don't have much time, Chief, at Diwali, but I'll take this question. Yes. But not really a question. What advice do you have for organizations out there on how to have adequate, independent, non-executive directors on their board? Right. Now, my own counsel will be that to everyone, let's say every three executive directors, you have six who are not executive directors, mm. three non-executive directors or two, but more independent non-executive directors. Now, if this is done, not only will you have the benefit of expertise and experience on your board, you'll always have balanced thinking it will not denigrate from the profit that a company can make. The company will still prosper and thrive. But you can be sure that when you have people of integrity who are not beholden to the owners of the company, they will ensure that integrity is the watchword at all times. They will ensure that the focus and the purpose of the company is not deviated from. They will ensure, because their names will also be at stake, they will ensure that nothing untoward happens on that board. 
Wonderful. We can't go further than this. This is where we are going to draw the curtain on today's conversation. And <clears throat> I, the book before I wrap up, yes, I would like to answer ask this question because it's um, it is important for me to ask. Some people of the opinion, some school of thought of the opinion that you feel expertise gap with the positions of non-executive directors you know there are some organizations whereby you need to get in expertise yes. that you fill the expertise gap with the position of non-executive directors mm -hmm. what is your perspectives on this well it will be dual for example no serious minded company will have its executive management that is bereft of expertise they will have their own expertise but what a non-executive director brings by way of expertise will either be complementary or divergent to that of the executive management so i'm of the school of thought that believes that yes they bring expertise but it is not only their expertise that the board will benefit from okay. the people who are already there in executive management have their own expertise the managing director has his own expertise the executive director has her own expertise but the expertise that the nets bring or the INETs bring will either be complementary or are or be divergent to that of the company and it can only benefit the company for example if you have divergent views on the board i've sat at board meetings where the views of management were changed by the views of the net and the INET to the benefit of the company. In fact, that's where I want to go. I don't have much time, but I want you to take this question in a few seconds. Yes. Can the non-executive directors challenge the performance of the organization? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. How would they go about doing the, that? Every board, every standard board should have board committees. Okay. Now, for example, the most important committee on any board should be the risk management committee. That committee will have oversight functions over the budgeting process, over the auditing process of the company. So if the community system is used adequately, it serves as a counterbalance to whatever trouble might come in future. And I've been on board where it is the work of those committees that saved the company from the hammer of the regulator. And it's very good. So it is important to always have non-executive directors on the board. Of utmost importance. Okay, let me let me let me let me take this question and probably wrap up with it. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. The, I mean, in corporate governance, it is stipulated that we should have non-executive directors, and you also uh, mend mentioned that we should have executive directors yes. and independent directors. So, what is not in our claim is, is the senior, senior yes. independent not in the Nigerian code, not in the Nigerian code, senior independent non-executive non directors. Yes. And one of the things that you said could likely affect that is maybe if the senior independent non-executive directors rub shoulders with the chairman. Mm -hmm. Now, you agree with me that it is a good idea where it is being practiced. What can you suggest if there is need for us to review the corporate Nigerian code of corporate governance? What do you suggest? How do you what what do you suggest the best way to go about? Incidentally, I have a paper okay. on this very subject, and what I recommend in that paper is that if the code were to be reviewed today, we should have a provision like that for public liability companies. Okay. Public liability companies, because oftentimes you will discover that the strength of independence on the boards of those companies needs to be sharpened okay and my recommendation in that paper is that anybody who is be, to be so nominated for any such board in the senior independent non executive director post must be somebody who has had at least 20 years cognate experience as an independent director wonderful thank you very much that is what i want to take from you and that is where we wrap up on corporate governance platform today chief adeni jadewali thank you very much thank for coming so on the much, show doctor. and big thank you to all our viewers for being part of the show and for the person that sent a text message thank you very much we invite you to join us next week same time same station 
And on behalf of my producer, Adebo Egalabi, and my technical director, David Adepoju, I remain Dr. Tunde Odeyemi. Keep spreading the gospel of corporate governance and bye for now. Do you have continuity or association plan for your business? Has anyone shared the concept of sustainability with you? What about the need to protect the rights of minority shareholders? What are those ingredients germane to having effective meetings? For these and many more, tune in to a corporate governor's platform every Thursday on MITV, your darling station, on DSTV 255 and UHF 43. At 4 30 p.m. Corporate Governance Platform is your best medium for informative and educative strategies for the practice of the corporate governance profession. Institute, Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, ICSA, 